Hello everyone, it's Vittorio here for another episode of my dev vlog about Skid Cities. Uh, before we dive into it, I just wanted to say I'm so excited to share this with you. There's not a lot of you out there, like 100 or so, but I'm so excited about the progress here and you know we're just starting so let's get into it this dev vlog won't be as technical or as long as the previous one but i'm very excited about the progress i worked on cars and so one of the things that i really wanted to have in the city is this feeling of having a lot of traffic and people going back and forth on all sorts of vehicles and so that's what i've would like to do for, for Skid Cities. And one of the things that I really, really like is trails, especially very long trails, like you would see in the Homeworld games, if you ever played that, like huge trails of flying objects going around in space in that case, and in this case, in your cyberpunk city. And so that was my end goal, but it, it, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get there. So technically the first step was uh, to pair producers and consumers. So let me explain what I mean by that. In your city, you have different type of buildings and some of them form a network. And uh, so for example, let's say that you build a water recycler um, that will provide water around and that will provide water to the water network. And then you're gonna, and that's a producer. And then you're gonna have some buildings which are gonna consume the water, like factories and residential areas. And those are going to be the consumers of that network. And you always have to have the net of the network being bigger than zero in order for everyone to benefit. So basically, like, you will need to add more recyclers to the network. All of this stuff, stuff is happening behind the scenes. You just see the network, the water flowing around and alerts if the water goes too low. But that's how it works. It's a concept. Uh, technically in the game and you can apply I apply the same concept to uh, employment network which means if you build some factories the factories need people to work into them and uh, you need houses for that and the moment that you build for example residential poor houses um, they need to be connected to factories with a network that is composed by roads and so my idea to spawn cars and have them go around your cities okay what if we piggyback on this network concept and we just pair producers with consumers one by one and then we spawn cars between them and so the first part of the code was to just get a list of the all the um, producers on the same network let's say the employment network and then all the consumers in the network and then pair them and then if uh, the list of producers is too long then some of them will have to you know be paired twice with the same consumer and vice versa and so that code was fairly simple knocked it out done then the next one is uh, I really need to have some sort of algorithm to define the navigation patterns. Now, I don't really want a full-fledged navigation pattern because that's really, really complex. First to write and second for your computer to compute. And that's not really needed. Like, I'm not 100% sure that it would look cool if all the cars were always following precisely the most optimized path between their work and their house. Also, that's not how people behave. People go around, they do other stuff. And so I didn't really want to have a precise um, navigation algorithm, but at the same time, I didn't want this to look completely bonkers where they just go randomly. Um, so I settled for something in between and that's how it works. So uh, in this example, they have read uh, square is the producer and the gray square is the consumer all the maps is divided in squares they are will called tiles and so basically what I need to do is I'll just go I'll, I'll write an algorithm that will just follow the tiles and then uh, we'll, we'll try to figure out where to go at an intersection at first a random and then if one intersection uh, part doesn't work out then we'll go back to the previous intersection and just just try the other way and the idea how to you know pull this off is really simple i just keep a list of all the tiles that are already already visited so i won't visit them again and then i just go back to an intersection if uh, one end doesn't work out um, and so this took a fairly bit amount of time and uh but i did it and so um once this is done 
we're still not ready to see any resulting game. So at this point, I've been writing, you know, 400-ish lines of code without seeing anything, which is very, very dangerous if you ask me. But uh, at this point, I just need to, you know, split the classes in a little bit different way. And, you know, if, if you guys are interested in how I'm structuring the code in classes and stuff like that, please leave a comment. Uh, I'm not going deep into that. And then basically, uh, I added a rectangle that's gonna be my car for now, and I couldn't resist and I added a trail to this rectangle, and then I played, and they showed up. Um, they just didn't move, because there was a bug. But then I fixed the bug and they would move, and that's amazing. And so that's the first step. So they're moving around, and so now I, what I want to do is I have t uh, an additional problem where like, okay, well, what happens if you delete the road where the cars are going through it and what if you change the network and what if you change the producers and consumers like how often should we update this and I didn't want to update this as often as I update say the new buildings because that's very very often it's like once every two seconds or so um, and that would be too much you you know you would see the cars disappearing in the middle of the road continuously every time you change road like that's not something I wanted so I built a system that basically updates everything every 20 seconds and then um, if you change something in the network it's gonna mark the cars for deletion at the next stop so either at the producer or at the consumer uh, stop and um, and if they are not marked for deletion they will try to go back backwards back home and that works nicely and that, that that's how it looks like and uh, okay so now I have some additional uh, goals that I want to pull off and so the first thing you see uh, you can see here you have cars going between built buildings and unbuilt buildings and that's not what I want I want buildings to be um, you know, the, the spawn to be dependent on, okay, your building is actually up and running or it's not built yet. Um, and so I, uh, I coded that filler, that's kind of simple. And then, second step is, okay, I want to spawn different objects and that means that I need to create a different object. And so I, I modeled my car and the people that would go around from your uh, poorer residential areas and so the idea is if the residential areas are uh, slums or level one uh, for which you don't need, you don't need water you don't even need a road connection to be honest then you will just see people you know walking going on the bicycle going on a scooter and I really tried to do those cool umbrellas that are self-lit like you've seen Blade Runner you know where like the stick of the umbrella is a neon light itself not sure if you be able to appreciate that because of course like everything is in scale so those folks are really 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 small uh but i had fun nonetheless and then i also created my first bus and this is a bus the idea is this is um not public transportation because there's no public transportation everything is prioritized in in the skid cities uh world in terms of transportation but this is an autobus it's it's driven by an ai and it's it's bringing people back and forth who can't afford their own car uh, and so this is how it looks like i modeled it in blender uh, did it on substance painter again graffiti here if you didn't see my tutorial about graffiti check it out it's very cool that's how I use like real world Hong Kong protest graffiti in the game. And so, and now I have a spawner function to write. So I wrote a spawner function and basically it's just, you know, taking whatever building this is starting from and then spawning the right object at the right speed uh, because, you know, the bus is moving faster than people. And then I was like, okay, but what happens to your rich residential areas and what happens to your corporate, corporate offices? And, uh, well, you need a different car. And so I, I modeled this other car that's, uh, that's a spire, that's faster, uh, faster car. And uh, yeah, and that's how it looks all together. So I'm pretty satisfied. I think uh, one of the, the things that really, really made my day uh, was that I was worried about different levels. So in other words, in Skid Cities, what, what you can do is you can build uh, uh, cities on different uh, heights, on different levels. So, in other words, you can build a city on top of a city. So, once your city is developed enough, you can switch to the upper level and build on top, or you can always switch to the bottom level and build underground. And, and this is inspired by 
Asimov's books about the Earth uh, and uh, other, you know, sci-fi movies. But it's it's really cool to be able to structure your city on multiple vertical levels, and uh, each level is going to give you different bonuses and different characteristics, and so on and so forth. And so you can imagine, like from you know behind the scenes, I have a level manager that is managing all of this, but I didn't code the cars to specifically for this case and so I was worried like what happens if you build say a house on one level and the factory is in the underground which by the way may make a lot of, a lot of sense because some factories have bonuses underground and stuff like that so that that you know that may happen and so with my great surprises the cars were going down and it was looking good uh, the only thing that I needed to fix was that the cars um, didn't know they were changing level even though they were and so um, you, they, they would still be attached to the the previous level so I just wrote a quick function that would check okay if, I, if you're switching level you're going to the underground just know that so that you know it is shown when you're looking at, at the underground level and not anywhere else and uh, that was a very quick and now it, it looks fantastic like the cars switch and go back and go forth uh, and it's very very cool really satisfied with this and uh, yeah, so this is my dev blog. This Kid Cities is a cyberpunk city building game. I'm thinking about putting a demo on each.io so that you guys can download it and try it and give me some feedback before the Steam Early Access release this winter. Um, if you're interested, please leave a comment and let me know if you would like me to upload a build, uh, like a free demo on itch. And uh, yeah, and until next week, um, Happy building. I don't know if you're building another city builder. I don't know. I need to come up with an outro. Whatever. Subscribe and like. <laughs>